so we have all subscribers list, which is a parrot list, so you can say a master list in which all the subscribers that we have in our account will be saved or will be stored in that particular list, right? Okay. Now we have, so this list is created by Marketing Cloud itself and we do not create this and we cannot, like you don't have any control over like deleting this list or, you know, uh, or editing this list. It's based on automated or we we'll, we used to uh, integrate with some other uh, SQL database to import that list. Uh, so we cannot run the SQL on the list. We cannot, okay. we cannot, like we can only um, deal with the data extension when it comes to SQL. But what we can do, we have a activity called import activity. So okay. using that activity, we can import the data into this particular list. Okay. okay. Uh, so that is possible, but that is a like different, you know, uh, concept. Yeah, uh, process, process. Okay. Uh, so what happens is that as per the definition, if we have a subscriber, so a subscriber okay. is a person who has you know opted in to receive the communication, right? Okay. So by definition, that person is called a subscriber. Okay. Now marketing law says that okay, whatever like like uh, whoever your subscriber is, it has to be a part of the all subscribers list. Now we have another way to create the list that is our, that are user defined list. So when we go to my list, I can create some uh, user defined list which are nothing but a subset of the all subscribers list. So for example, uh, that um, I create a list uh, for, um, you know, uh, for Indian customers. So what I'll do that, let's say I have all the customers or all the subscribers from different, different countries, maybe India, USA, Canada, right? Yeah. And this time I only want to target Indian customers for some campaign. So what I'll do, I will not be uh, sending the email to all the subscribers, right? to all the customers. Yeah. What I'll yeah. do, I'll create my own separate list and then there I will have only my uh, Indian customers and then we'll be sending the email. Okay. Um, so list is basically your kind of, you know, um, a segment that you are preparing for the target audience so that you can send the communication to them. Okay. Uh, group is something that you can, you know, create a like group. We have two different types of group. One is a random group and another is a filtered group. So random group means that you want to pick some of the subscribers randomly. So if you want to distribute some coupons randomly, or maybe you want to select a winner, you know, uh, for a campaign randomly. So whenever you don't have any defined criteria, then you go ahead with the random group. Otherwise you have, you want to go with the filtered group in which we define one criteria and based on the criteria, we pick up the records and then put that into group. Okay. So if you can see over here, um, we have list. But all these like all subscribers list or any user defined list or the groups will contain <clears throat> the uh, subscriber at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Now, the thing is that we can have, let's say, one subscriber, uh, let's say subscriber ID uh, 001, right? In my particular list uh, for Indian customers. Okay. But since it is a subscriber, it has to be a part of all subscribers list, right? Yeah. Um, but the other way around is not true. Let's say we have one, uh, you know, um, let's say US customer that will be part of my old subscriber list, but that will not be a part of my Indian customer list, right? Or yeah. maybe there could be any chance that it is not part of any of the list. It is only a part of the old subscribers list. So all subscribers is a parent and the groups and all the list are the child. Really? So parent will have all the subscribers. And the child might have or might not have the subscriber that we have in our subscribers. Okay. Now, when we talk about the subscription, so the same rule applies. Um, so if you will unsubscribe from the parent, it means that it is unsubscribed from all the communication. Um, okay. It is like, uh, uh, you can say account level unsubscription, where it will be, un like where the subscriber will be unsubscribed from all the kind of email communications. Now, if we will unsubscribe from a particular list. Um, okay, so here uh, the status of the um, subscriber is active. So if I'll make the subscriber inactive or let's say unsubscribe for this particular list, then we will not be able to send the communication to this user using this particular list. But if I'll choose any other list, I mean, uh, these statuses for user defined list are independent. Mm -hmm. So in this particular list, the subscriber might have unsubscribed in another list. The same subscriber can have status as active, active. which okay. means I want to receive the communication related to, uh, let's say, um, Amazon uh, fashion. 
but I don't want to receive the communication related to Amazon electronics. electronics. Okay. So based on, you know, type of my preference or maybe based on any criteria, I okay. might have different, different status for different, different list. So okay. these are the child level, but okay. on a parent level, if I unsubscribe, it means that I don't want to receive any communication. If I don't want to receive any communication, which means that for any of the lists that I'm part of, I will be yeah. unsubscribed. Okay. Got it. Got it. Understood. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Nagul. So we have different types of sense based on uh, the functionality, like not exactly the functionality, but the way uh, we trigger it or the way we initiate that particular sense. So synchronous data extension, okay, we cannot see over here, uh, okay. but, the thing, but the thing is that whenever we have this system integrated or marketing cloud integrated with the Salesforce account, okay. then what happens, uh, we have Salesforce account where we have object site. Right? So if you're aware about the Salesforce CRM, uh, we okay. have accounts, object, we have a uh, lead opportunity, right? Or any other customer. Okay. okay. Now object is nothing but a table only. Uh, so we say, you know, table like uh, in a different, different way or uh, where it comes to different, different environment. So in marketing cloud, we call it as a data extension in Salesforce, we call it as an object. Okay. So okay. the same thing, but the different names because of the different platform. Okay. So now we have the data is stored in our object, which is nothing but a table. And we have, let's say hundred records. Okay. And now what we want to do, we have, uh, uh, we'll talk about the contact builder in a while. Then I'll show you how we set up the uh, object and all. Now okay. what we want to do, we want to pull in the data from that object and store this in our uh, marketing cloud data extension. Because the pres the data is present in another table, right? Yeah. Uh, the way we can only store the data is in another table because the structure has to be same. Okay. So we, we don't to need to create, that. Yeah. 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 So we don't need to create the data extension. What happens whenever we uh, sync that object? So we have that option uh, in Contact Builder to sync the object. So whenever we click on that sync button, that okay, I want to sync the contact object. It means that it will create a data extension that is called a synchronized data extension for the contact object in marketing cloud. And it will also pull all the reports that are there uh, in object. Uh -huh. And then it will make the sync alive, which means that every 15 minutes, it will check that whether there is any update or not. Update okay. means that any deletion or any updation, any record, uh, any new record is created in that object. So whatever is there, uh, it will check every 15 minutes and it will exactly make the same changes in our synchronous data extension. Okay. So that okay. is why it is called synchronous data extension. It means it is sync. It is sync with other object. Okay. Got it. Got it. Uh, so first one, we have the guide send, but um, uh, I think the account got updated to the latest version. So okay. you won't be able to see the guided send anymore. Okay. So in the previous version, we had this guided send. Uh, the okay. functionality remains same. Now it has been replaced oh. by send flow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, now what does this do? Um, so it is used for the single send. And as a name says guided send, it means it is going to guide us. So whenever we click on this, uh, let me go to one of the email content. So we click on the send button and it walks us through the different steps that are required to send the email. So the different steps like, you know, um, that uh, choose a send classification, choose the audience, and then, uh, you know, configure the um, uh, delivery and all, and then review and all these things. So it is guiding us. It is walking us through all the different steps. So uh, it is, you know, walking us through the different steps that are required to send the email. So first of all, we have to define the properties, select audience, configure delivery, and then review and send. So this is called, I mean, this way of sending the email is called the, um, hmm. no, the send flow. Send flow, send flow. So earlier we used to have the guided send. It used to give us the same thing, but in the form of a wizard. wizard. Here we have this entire page now. So hmm. it used to open this pop-up and within the pop-up, we used to send the email. So, but now it is that it has been removed. So don't worry about it. Okay. okay. Um, next we have is the test send. So how do we make a test send? So we have to go to the preview and test. So let me show you. So why do we use this uh, send flow? So whenever you want to make a single send, so let's say we have a requirement from the client and they want to inform uh, about something. Maybe there's a sale coming up. Okay. And uh, 
let's say there's a Diwali sale or Christmas sale and what they want to do, they want to inform about the sale to all the customers. So maybe there's a new notification that, okay, uh, yeah. today, uh, today the service will be down or today, you know, our um, workers are not, today we are on holiday or something like that. Okay. So you want to make a single send, it will be only a one-time send, right? Yeah. We select the audience, we click on the send button and that is done. After that, there will not be any send anymore automatically. Okay. So if you want to make a single send, one-time send, uh, then we can use this way. Otherwise, um, we have other ways as well that we'll talk about. Uh, next, we have the test send. So test send basically, as the name says, we are going to uh, test something, right? Mm -hmm. So what are we testing? We are testing the email content. Uh, why are we testing? So mm -hmm. we are testing because we want to check that the mm -hmm. content that we are able to see on our screen uh, mm -hmm. will be rendered similarly on different devices or not. So let's say we have um, iPhone, we have um, mm -hmm. Android, we have different different email clients like um, gmail and outlook and we want to make sure that it looks exactly the same as it is rendering over here so we'll click on the preview and test so it's not like that if you will make a single send using the send flow we won't be able to test it right yeah. uh, if it is uh, sent on a device or if it is sent to an email address obviously we will be able to see whether the uh, content is aligned or not properly but why do we ch choose the test over the send flow? Because it takes less steps. Uh, it is easy to make a test send. And there we need to follow the entire process, right? Uh, first of all, you have to choose the send classification and then you know audience and this and that. So it is a complete like four step process. But here it is very easy. You just have to click on this and you come to this particular um, option. You just have to you know type in the email address and click on send. Okay. So this way we can make the test send. Uh, and there are other options. I mean, the first reason so where, where, where in this in this step where it will pull the up uh, the audience has been shown here, right? So audience is this one. Uh, so this is the content that will be sent to the user. And when it comes to audience, we have two different options. One is the individual. Individuals. So we can type in uh, up to five email addresses. So it says now enter up to five email addresses. Okay. Or if you have larger audience, then we can select a data extension. Data extension. Okay. Okay. Uh, so got it. Generally, what do we do? We have a you know development team of like say mm -hmm. two developers or three developers or maybe a maximum five members. So we generally type in the email address over here, uh, whatever we want to test, and we can click on send test one. Okay. Okay. One thing that I want to add over here is that so this is the content which is you know uh, getting previewed uh, against the subscriber. Okay. So whenever we want to preview any email message, we have to select a subscriber. Otherwise, if you will not select a subscriber, like if I click on the cancel button, then I will not be able to see the preview. Because preview means that, okay, for this particular subscriber, what the email content looks like. So it might, right now it doesn't have any personalization, but let's say it has a personalization called first name. Then what will happen? It will show the first name for this particular customer. Okay. And um, for this particular customer, it will show Raj. Right. So for different, different okay. subscribers, it will show different, different preview. Yeah. So this works uh, for, uh, for transaction email as well, right? Uh -huh. I mean, transactional uh -huh. commercial it depends uh -huh. on like the nature of the email. Okay. So, so that is different. Sorry. Sorry. Uh -huh. Because okay. for transaction email, it will show different, uh, different communication, right? So just want to see how it is. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I wanted to add here is that, so based on the, like the preview we have generated, right? And the email address that we are typing over here, mm -hmm. it means that we just need to send this content. We are not sending the email to this particular subscriber. The subscriber's email address is uh, raj 5 at red gmail.com, right? Yeah. So whenever we make the test send, so the purpose of the test send is not to communicate with the subscriber, yeah. but to test what the content looks like on different devices. So we will not put the email address of the subscriber, right? We will put our email address, a developer's email address so that we can test it on our devices. Yeah. That okay, what it looks like on my iPhone, on my Android, on my Google, or let's say Gmail, on these things. Okay. So uh, whenever the tracking data is generated in the backend, it will be generated against the subscriber. So Marketing Cloud says that, okay, uh, you have selected the subscriber and you're sending the email in the tracking data. It will show that you have sent this email to this particular email address. 
it means that you have sent the simulator to this particular subscriber but the reality is that we are sending the exact content to this particular email address okay okay so this is a test send and the purpose of the test send is to test the email content and what it looks like on different email devices 